Welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review today's fountain pen is from a company I'd never heard of before but it's named after an architect I've admired for decades Frank Lloyd Wright this is the Acme Studios Frank Lloyd Wright fountain pen and rollerball this pen is on loan for review from my good friend Ron and has given me an opportunity to rediscover one of the greatest architects of all time and also to discover a marvelous source of some very interesting and attractive writing instruments watches jewelry and other accessories in the Acme studio I'm going to look at this fountain pen but also examine the history and work of the great architect Frank Lloyd Wright and also look into some terrific offerings from Acme studio right now <music> So what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I want to focus on three distinct areas of interest. Maybe not your interest, but my interest. Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect, Acme Studio Products, and their website, and finally, a review of this pen in particular. Feel free to use the YouTube chapters feature to click through to the portions of the review that interest you. This pen is on loan for review from my good friend Ron. It was a gift to him from friends of his who were traveling in the United States and happened upon this pen at the Bromfield Pen Shop in Boston, Massachusetts. Let's see, last time I was in Boston, all I brought back was a case of food poisoning. The metal pen case is in this black sleeve with the Frank Lloyd Wright collection logo on the top and we open the lid and there's some paperwork a uh, little brochure of Acme products which I'll get into in more detail shortly and you can see that there's this is a convertible pen so there's the front of the rollerball and some rollerball cartridges a couple of them I think I don't think two of them came with the set but there are two here and there is a standard international cartridge the other of which is in the pen and this small card with a short bio of Frank Lloyd Wright and uh, a little code here to send you to a video on Frank Lloyd Wright and this is where I want to begin with Frank Lloyd Wright if you are skipping skip now Frank Lloyd Wright was an architect whose style has become one of the most recognizable in the world of 100 greatest buildings in the world the architectural record identified 11 designed by Frank Lloyd Wright Wright developed a design philosophy that is embodied by the term organic architecture where design is harmonized with the world nature and the environment my first introduction to Wright came when I still had no idea who he was my first viewing of my now favorite Alfred Hitchcock film North by Northwest introduced me to the Van Damme house on top of Mount Rushmore of course there was and is no house on top of that South Dakota monument but the designs for sets and matte paintings by production designer Robert Boyle are strongly influenced by Wright's masterpiece Falling Water in Pennsylvania Hitchcock wanted to use Frank Lloyd Wright but his fee was about 10% of the film's budget in fact Boyle's designs have resulted in some real homes like this one built in Yatsugatake Japan in 2011 other Wright designs made it into popular culture as well for example in another 1959 film the house on haunted hill starring Vincent Price the exteriors of the haunted house were of the Wright designed Ennis house in Los Angeles 
That particular location is popular in Hollywood, having adorned many films and television shows, including Blade Runner in 1982. The interest surrounding Wright in 1959 has to do with Wright's final design and probably best known work, the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. The building stands out as a striking example of organic design of soft edges and curves in a city strewn with glass and steel boxes. Wright died six months before the Guggenheim was opened. The building continues to inspire other architects and other building designs, including one right here in Calgary. If you are as fascinated by Wright as I am, I urge you to follow the link I'll provide in the description to a wonderful one hour long video on the life and work of Frank Lloyd Wright. A fascinating life. So just as I was editing this video, my Facebook feed displayed this photograph of Frank Lloyd Wright with his granddaughter, Ann Baxter. I had no idea she was his granddaughter. She was a Hollywood superstar remembered for her over-the-top performance in Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments. Oh, Moses, Moses. Oh, Moses, Moses. Oh, Moses. Oh, Moses, Moses. And her Oscar-nominated performance in All About Eve. And this also ties back to Hitchcock, as Baxter starred in the Hitchcock thriller I Confess in 1953. This pen set by Acme Studios is based on a Frank Lloyd Wright stained glass design for what is known as the Cooney House or Cooney Playhouse, a home and private studio designed and built by Wright in 1912 in Chicago. These stained glass panels are now housed in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Before we talk about the pen itself, I want to showcase the Acme Studios website and products. When I first saw this fountain pen, Intrigued as I might be by Frank Lloyd Wright, I was dubious about the quality of the fountain pen. We shall see shortly that that worry was unfounded. I was further surprised by the Acme Studio. The name Acme doesn't generally inspire confidence as it evokes images of the coyote sending out for roadrunner traps and other gadgets from the Acme company, probably from Walla Walla, Washington. But Acme Studios was founded by Adrian Olabonaga and his wife Leslie Bailey in 1985. You can easily get lost for a day or two in the Acme Studio website. They seem to be a company that specializes in bringing artists, designers, architects, and musicians work into products like writing instruments, watches, jewelry, card cases, wallets, ties, and other accessories. Just looking at their array of writing instruments, there are so many cool choices from the Beatles and Buzz Aldrin to Andy Warhol, Salvador Dali, and Leonardo da Vinci. If you see a design you absolutely adore, but it's only available in a rollerball, they have a fountain pen conversion kit that works with all of their pens. And you can get the nibs in medium and fine steel as well as medium gold plated steel. You will see in a moment that the fountain pen nib is unique. And even more, you can purchase alternate sections that match your preferences in chrome, rubber coated, and knurled steel, as well as a capacitive front section for your tablet work. Some designs that caught my eye on the website were the etched Frank Lloyd Wright design based on his home in Pennsylvania called Taliesin, and this pen based on the work of Frida Kahlo. I just saw an exhibition of her work here at the Glenmore Museum in Calgary not long ago. There are some excellent gift ideas for the lovers of writing instruments and art and design. Now let's finally turn to the pen itself. Acme has standardized on this pen for the ballpoint, rollerball, and fountain pens. And this kit came with a rollerball conversion kit that you just screw onto the end of the barrel. The pen itself is a standard cigar-shaped metal pen which has some heft to it, but it isn't overly heavy. I assume this is brass. Acme says their lacquer finishes are done by hand. Other than the etched versions of their pens, the lacquer is their entire business, so I expect this much is true. 
From the top we see a chrome bullet shaped finial, an attached chrome clip that has Acme stamped vertically on it. It is very springy and very usable. The lacquered enamel over brass cap tapers up to a wide chrome band that has two channels as well as Frank Lloyd Wright's registered trademark signature stamped into it. There is a small step down to the barrel which tapers all the way down to a mirror image bullet shaped finial. Incidentally all of these hardware parts are available from Acme Studio website. The cap snaps off to reveal a black plastic tapering section that ends with a chrome band that serves as part of the cap seal. Inside the cap we see an extensive plastic cap seal. This pen was loaned to me already inked up and sat in his box for about three months before I've written with it and it wrote the first time out of the box. I guess that seal works. The nib is a medium steel number six size and it is friction fit with the plastic feed and you can see it has a triangle circle and square design uh, the circle incorporating the breather hole Acme and then M for medium uh, stamped into it the section unscrews to show a standard international cartridge and I believe it came with a standard international converter as well the cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen very nicely balanced in the hand this is comfortable both posted and unposted the section is a nice size both in girth and length and is not slippery at all this particular pen is called the Playhouse White and retails for $118 US on the Acme Studio website which I think is very reasonable price for what you're getting here now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the Acme Frank Lloyd Wright with a Pilot Metropolitan a Pen BBS 308, a Platinum Plaisir, and a Parker Sonnet. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Acme Frank Lloyd Wright and it is a medium steel nib. And the ink today is just your can't spell today standard blue from the cartridge that came with the pen. Let's check the wetness on this pen. You can see it's decently wet. And before I get to the rest of this and the quote. I want to talk about how this nib feels on paper. It's totally unique. Yes, it is wet, and yes, even though you're hearing that on the paper, it is very smooth. But there's a large amount of feedback. Perhaps you can hear that as I as I write here. and the nib actually sings a bit. This is very much like a pencil on vellum kind of feedback. It's traction and it's not unpleasant at all. This sharp, swallow you whole. Shaking, tenderizing, down you go. If you want a super smooth glassy nib this isn't it for you. 
I haven't experienced a titanium nib yet, but this has all the earmarks of that kind of feedback that has been described about titanium. It's very unique. It kind of stabilizes your writing. Um, I have a few nibs that are so glassy that it feels like your lines are uncontrolled and you're going to skitter off the page. This anchors your lines. And as I said, feels very much like a pencil. Makes your lines much more controlled and focused, if that makes any sense at all. I like it. In terms of line variation, that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. So it's actually surprisingly springy it, uh, for a steel nib. And it's flexy by no means at all. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.6 millimeters, which is bang on a Western medium. And sort of part way between a, a medium and a broad uh, for, for Japanese. And for some reverse writing, not too bad at all. Very thin, very dry. And some quick writing. No problems whatsoever. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I have to say that this pen totally blew me away from my preconceptions. I thought I was going to see a gift shop novelty souvenir kind of pen that made in China, you know, with a cheap silk screen painting on it. You know, a Jinhao X450 with I Love New York painted on it, that kind of thing. But I found the opposite. I don't know who makes their pen blanks uh, or their nibs for them. But Acme has obviously not wanted to tarnish the legacy of their amazing collection of artists, musicians, and designers with a substandard product in their pen hardware. The support they show to their customers and their products is obvious through their extensive website, customer service, and aftermarket parts and support. The roughly $120 US price point is very competitive when you take into account the writing quality of this instrument along with all of their customer support. The pen is beautiful to look at, fits nicely in the hand and writes very well with a very unique writing experience. The only thing I would point to just to clarify what this is and what you're getting with this pen is that it is a metal pen with a steel nib. It's a metal pen with some weight to it. So if those are not your thing, I'd avoid this pen. Also, you're paying for the copyrighted design of the artist. These are not cheap half-tone prints of the Starry Night on a pen. This is quality enamel workmanship. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.